Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm Brian Stewart. We're continuing our subject of animals. We're on lesson two. Lesson two, the title is Smart as a Chimp. So smart as a chimp, a chimp is a chimpanzee. We're going to focus on chimpanzees are very smart animals. Of course, a chimpanzee is this animal here. We'll look at that word later on. And that, of course, brings us to our vocabulary. Okay, and then our first word is very funny word, right? What's going on here? Right? Kanjiropida, right? That's what you say. <gasps> to make someone laugh by touching them. Touching them, not just touching them, right? But by touching them like this, especially on the bottom of their feet. <laughs> What's going on? Tickle. To tickle somebody. <laughs> I'm going to tickle you, right? So if you see these feet, you can say, haha, I'm going to tickle. I'm going to tickle you. So you see somebody's feet, you go, hee hee hee, I'm going to tickle you, right? Okay. And you tickle somebody, you make them laugh. Okay. Next one. To stick to something. Of course, to stick to something, especially to hold on to something, right? These, these uh, kids are holding on to the tree. They're sticking to the tree, especially the one on the bottom. The, the kid on the top just sitting on the tree. But the, the child on the bottom, what's going on? Cling. Uh, the child is clinging to the tree, to hold on to, to stick to something, to cling to something. So we have cling, clung, clung. Because cling is an irregular verb. It changes form for the past tense. Cling, clung, clung. Cling, clung, clung. Okay, next word. Whoa, this looks very dangerous. Especially, I'm worried about his neck. Ooh, very dangerous. To fight by grabbing and throwing. So when you grab somebody and you throw them or you hold them down, you try to push them down on the floor, what type of fighting are they doing? There's lots of different fighting, right? There's martial arts like taekwondo, right? There's punching like boxing. What are these guys doing? They are wrestling. To wrestle. Wrestle. That's a little dip, bit of a difficult word. You have W-R. R-R. Wrestle. And it's T-L-E. You don't say T-L-E, right? You say wrestle. Wrestle. It's like you don't even pronounce the T. Wrestle. The T is silent. But they are wrestling. And yeah, they got to be careful. That looks very dangerous. Okay. Four. Very smart. Well, he's, I want to tickle his feet, right? Oh, okay, just kidding. Okay. But he's very smart. Maybe he read all these books. I don't know. But somebody who's very smart, we say they are intelligent. Whew. Really long word. If you can say that word, then you are intelligent, right? Intelligent. 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 Somebody who's intelligent, they're very smart. But be careful. Intelligent is really ability. Ability. If you are intelligent, it means you are able to learn quickly. And of course, that's you have smarts. You have uh, you are smart and you are able to learn things quickly. I hope so, right? Because studying can be hard. But if you're intelligent, you can study quickly and learn things quickly. Next one. Having lots of hair. So if something has a lot of hair, we say it's furry. Now, we may have learned this word before, fur. Fur is just a lot of hair on a, on a body of, you know, an animal. Uh, animals have fur. So they have a lot of fur. If they have a lot of fur, then you can say, you can make it an adjective. This is an adjective, right? Adjective, furry. He has fur. Fur is a noun. Make it an adjective. It becomes furry. So my dog is very furry. A bear is very furry. Okay, furry. I'm not furry. I hope not. <laughs> no, I just have a, maybe hair in my, in my arms, but I'm not furry. People aren't furry. Animals are furry. Okay. Oh, what's going on here? This is a big subak. No, it's not watermelon. It's somebody's stomach, right? Lower stomach. What else do we call it? 
pickle, by the way, just had to say that, okay? <laughs> we say it's belly. And I said, pickle, right? Pickle is right here, right? Looks like a little eye is looking at the boy. But pickle, in English, we say belly button. So we use that word belly, belly. Belly is kind of a casual word. Uh, you know, kids use it, belly. Uh, stomach is more of a formal word. Doctors will use stomach. Parents will use stomach. But, you know, if you're speaking casually with your friends, uh, belly. So, uh, you know, belly, like a big belly, like me, right? Okay. Okay, so belly. And this, of course, everybody has a belly button. You have a belly button. That's what we call it there. Belly, when we use it in the plural, we change Y to I and ES at the end. Bellies, right? So if many people, you're talking about many people, they have many bellies. Okay, belly. Okay. A small stick. If we're looking at a small stick, a very small stick, maybe this long, maybe this long, it's very thin, we can say that it is a twig. A twig is another word for a small stick. English is very descriptive, isn't it? We have a lot of specific words for very uh, unique or very special types of things. Stick is like an umbrella word. You know, you can have long sticks, short sticks, you know, thick sticks, thin sticks. But a twig is a special kind of stick. It means short and thin. It's a twig. You can hold it easily. What is this guy doing? Is he crazy? <laughs> okay. What is he yelling at his golf club? Uh, a feeling he has strong emotions. Maybe he's very upset because he hit the ball and it went the wrong way. So instead of thinking, oh, I made a mistake, he blames his golf club. He's very, he has a very strong emotion towards his golf club. But remember, emotions aren't just negative. Emotions can be positive too. Happiness is an emotion. If you're really, really happy, that's an emotion. If you're really, really sad, that's also an emotion. There are many kinds of emotions. Emotions can be positive and they can be negative. So emotion isn't a positive or negative word. It just means all of those emotions. It's like an umbrella word for that. Okay. Oh, look at this chimp. He's dancing, right? The cool chimp. <laughs> okay. An animal that looks like a monkey. I just said the word. It's a chimpanzee. Now, notice that at the beginning of the lesson, it said smart as a chimp because chimpanzee which is the whole name, is a lot of times people will shorten it and just say chimp, right? I went to see a chimp at the zoo. Chimps are very smart. So we can say chimpanzee, chimpanzee, or we can just say chimp. It means the same thing. It's an animal that looks like a monkey. Actually, it is a monkey. It's a type of monkey. Okay. Ten. Thinking much or thinking a lot about what you are doing. When you're thinking a lot about what you're doing, you are being very careful, right? You're being very careful. This person's being very careful looking at the bugs, right? When you think a lot about what you're doing, you do it carefully. You should think a lot about the things you are doing. Do things carefully. Some things you don't have to think a lot about, like, you know, you know, uh, well, brushing your teeth, you have to do it carefully. Think about how you brush your teeth. But sometimes we don't do things very carefully. We don't think about them because it's habit or we do them many times. But if we do something and we think about it very deeply, then we're doing it carefully. Okay. Eleven. Oh, that's a sad situation. Pain in the stomach. Ah, oh, pay up by all, right? Oh, money, pay up by all. What do we call that? You say, I have, whoa, that's such a long word. It gives me a headache to think about it. <laughs> okay. Stomach ache. And notice I just said headache. Now, there's a lot of aches that you can have. There are a lot of aches. You can have a headache, right? You can have a, a stomach ache. You can have a backache. So we use ache 
for, with different parts of the body, right, to say that they hurt. Not always, right? Don't say I have a nose ache. That doesn't work, right? It's usually headache, backache. You could have a toothache. 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 It's one word. I'm just showing the difference. And stomach ache, right? Those are commonly the words we use with ache. Don't say have an elbow ache or an arm ache. Eh, that's weird. You could say I have an ache in my arm. I have an ache in my elbow. Or you could probably just say my eh hurts. It hurts. My arm hurts. My elbow hurts. My tooth hurts. Do not say my tooth is sick. That's crazy, right? Let's say if you're walking along, bang, ow, your thumb, you bang your thumb against a table. Oh, up I oh, right? Don't say, oh, my thumb is sick. Huh? Your thumb is sick? Achoo, achoo. Oh, poor thumb, go to bed and drink some orange juice. That's crazy, right? You can't say that. You only use sick with your whole body. I am sick. Susan is sick. If you're sick, it means you have a disease. You have a cold. You should go to bed, drink hot liquids, take some medicine. That's not what this is going on. You don't say my stomach is sick. Oh, poor stomach, go to bed. No, you say I have a stomach ache or my stomach hurts. Don't say my stomach is sick. That's isangheo. Only people can be sick. Now, notice we say stomach ache before we learned belly. So you can also say belly ache, right? I have a belly ache or my belly hurts, right? Pain in the stomach, pain in the belly, belly ache, or most people will say stomach ache. Whew. Okay, so one word. A lot of interesting things about that word. It's a good word, a useful word. Remember to say these or say my momo hurts. My momo? What's a momo? Oh, my whatever. <laughs> right, my arm hurts, my ear hurts, my head hurts, my leg hurts, my thumb hurts. Okay, so interesting word. Okay, next one. Oh, that's very cute, isn't it? These sisters, maybe they're sisters, they love each other, right? So what are they doing? They hold closely with the arms. When you hold something closely with your arms because you love it, like your brother, your sister, or your puppy dog, right? What are you doing? You are hugging it. To hug. You hug something. You hold closely with your arms. You show somebody that you love them. You hug them. Okay. Next one. Whoa. I know him. He's a famous director. Okay. Anyway. To make a sound that shows you are pleased. Now, it looks like these guys are talking, and what is he doing? He's going, ha, 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 right? He's pleased. He is laughing. I have kind of a strange laugh, huh? I'm sorry. But, you know, some people have a very deep laugh. Ho, 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 ho. Some people have a little laugh. He, 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 right? So there's many kinds of laughs, but we call them a laugh. We call that action to laugh. To make a sound that shows you are pleased or you are happy or something is funny, then you laugh. Okay, next one. Cleaning. It's time to clean. To press your hand on something and move back and forth. Press your hand on the glass and move back and forth. What are you doing? You are rubbing. Now, rub doesn't always mean somebody's cleaning, right? If somebody's arm hurts, you can rub it. Maybe it will feel better, but be careful. Why does it hurt? If there's a nail sticking in their arm, don't rub it, right? <laughs> but if they've been exercising, then you can rub it, right? So rub just means to put your hand or your fingers on a surface and move back and forth, right, with pressure to rub something. Okay. Of course, when you clean things, you have to rub them well. Okay. Oh, are you hungry? We have something here to eat. A dry fruit with a hard shell. So the outside part, right, the outside part is the shell. The inside part, this part here, is the dry fruit. And what do we call the whole thing? What do we call all of it? We call it a nut, a nut. This looks like a walnut. 
and of course you know about a peanut, right? There are many kinds of nuts. A nut. By the way, it's interesting in English.、Uh, be careful using nut, right? Nut is a food, but you can also call people a nut. If you say he's a nut, it means he's kind of crazy, <laughs> right?、Uh, he's kind of crazy. He's a nut, or you're a nut. Sometimes people will joke around, and you call your friend, "Oh, you're so you're so silly. You're a nut, right?" That's sometimes people will call other people a nut, but that's just you know、uh, you know a different meaning. This, of course, is food. It's a nut. Nuts are good for you. Okay, next one. Oh, these are not good for you, but they taste great. How do they taste? They are very delicious. So how do they taste? In Korean, you might say "nyam." Oh, got it. Oh, don't forget that one. So you say "nyam." How's my spelling? Is it okay? Yeah. Whoa. No.、Oh, what am I doing? What is that? <laughs> yum. See, yum, 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 yum. Mmm, masta. Right. <laughs> Very delicious. In English, it sounds similar to this. Sounds a little bit similar. Yummy. Yummy. Mmm. It's yummy in my belly. <laughs> right. Yummy in my stomach. It's yummy. Tastes very good, isn't that interesting? In English, we say yummy. In Korean, you say yum 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 yum. Very good. It's also very interesting to think about the opposite, pandero. Pandero in English, right? I'm going to use this symbol for pandero. We can say if something mashi opso, oh mashi ah yuck, mashi opso yo, right? We say yucky. Oops, c, y u c k y, yucky. Let me write that again. I'm getting too fast. There we go. That's much better. Yucky. Ooh, yucky. Ah, my shop sale. Right. In Korean, you say yucky wa. Is that amazing? Yummy. Yum 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 yum. Yucky. Ooh, yucky wa. Well, it's it's like English and Korean are almost the same. <laughs> okay. It's very interesting that we have similar sounds for similar、uh, meanings in this case. Okay. Okay, we've come to our exercise, vocabulary exercise. Now, in this case, on page 19 in your book, you have a crossword puzzle. It's a puzzle. We call it a crossword puzzle. A crossword puzzle on page 19. These are the words that you have to put in your crossword. In a crossword, because you have some words that go down and you have some words that go across, so it's cross. Crossword. Across means this way. So you have,、uh, we have different、uh, answers for the words that go across, and we have different answers for the words that go down. So first, we'll do across. Across. Number two. Nice picture. We can see the picture. What's going on there, right? What is this picture、uh, representing? These are the words that we have. Let's go over the words. First one is tickle, tickle. Next one. Cling, cling. Next one is twig, twig. Wrestle is the next one. Wrestle. Emotion, emotion. Next one is intelligent, intelligent. Then we have belly, right? Belly, and furry, furry. Okay, so these are the words we have, and we have to fit them into the puzzle. Now, as I said before, we look at the picture, and we can see which word we can match with the picture. What's going on here? Remember, kanjiro pita, pita. Sorry, kanjiro pita. My pronunciation not so good. Okay, if you do this, you are doing what? You are tickling somebody to tickle. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tickle you. So you tickle somebody. Okay, next one. Also across number five, he is a good student and very what? So he's a good student. If he's a good student, what is he? He learns quickly, right? He has the ability to learn quickly, and it's a very long word. So what word is it? Of course, here's a long word, but it's also the word that matches this sentence. He is a good student and very intelligent. Very intelligent. Okay.
Next one. Seven across. A chimpanzee can do what? What can a chimpanzee do? And of course, we're looking for one, two, three, four, five letters. Okay, so what can a chimpanzee do? Can a chimpanzee, what do they do? They usually cling. They can cling, stick to trees. They can cling to trees. Okay, next one. Eight across. My dog is cute and what? Think about your dog. Look at your dog. If you have a dog, it's a very cute dog, right? There's hair all over your dog's body. So that hair we call fur. That's a noun. Now we want to change it to an adjective. So we say my dog is cute. That's one adjective. And the other adjective is yogita. Furry, right? Furry. My dog is cute and furry. Has a lot of hair. Next one. Now we're going down. One down. Here we have the picture. Again, I always feel a little afraid for this guy. <laughs> He's going to hurt his neck. Okay, what's going on here? These guys are fighting. What's happening? They are wrestling. Wrestle. To wrestle. This is to wrestle. Remember, there's many kinds of fighting for sport, right? Don't do this <laughs> because you have a strong emotion. Do this only if it's a sport, okay? Wrestling, taekwondo, boxing, whatever. Okay, next one, down. Oh, what's going on here? I just used that word, right? Don't wrestle or fight somebody because of what? Because of emotion, right? He's showing strong emotion towards his golf club, emotion. Next one, four down. The chimpanzee has a big round what? What does the chimpanzee have that's big and round? Kind of like me. <laughs> what's, what's going on there? A belly, has a big round belly, right? Maybe the chimpanzee's drinking too much beer. That makes a big, no, I'm just kidding, a big round belly, okay? Okay, next one. Small sticks, very small sticks we can see here. They're very small, very thin. Remember what we talked about? What is the same word for a small stick? That's right here, twig. A twig is a small stick, okay.